From a contestant who put himself up for elimination, to another whose compassion left everyone in tears, these are the most heartwarming moments on Hell's Kitchen ever. You see, after the service in episode 7 of season 4, the blue team found themselves on the losing side. And the task of nominating one member for elimination weighed heavy on everyone's minds. Back at the dorms, Petroza, known for his honest nature, approached Matt to offer some kind words about the compliments Ramsey had given him earlier. Meanwhile, as the discussion about the nominations unfolded, Ben made an attempt to sway Petroza towards nominating LaRoss. But Petroza stood firm, displaying a remarkable sense of integrity. He wasn't ready to make a decision just yet. That's when Bobby extended an unusual proposal to him, a pact to mutually nominate each other. And true to this pact, Bobby cast a vote for Petroza, so then Chef Ramsay turned to him, inquiring about his choice. Notice the genuine sadness in Petroza's voice as he says he can't pick any of his teammates. I can't pick any of these guys. Cue the waterworks, guys. So he nominated himself. That was such a selfless act. Do you remember any other contestants who nominated themselves? Well, be sure to drop their names in the comment section down below. Even if there were others, not all of them were genuine. If you ask me, Petroza was a gem. Rather than resorting to pointing fingers at his teammates, he demonstrated an exceptional level of selflessness by nominating himself. This choice not only showcased his personal integrity, but also reflected his profound respect for the talent and dreams of his fellow contestants. And it didn't go unnoticed by Chef Ramsay. Your level of maturity stands out. He wasn't just another contestant, he was the show's heart and soul, making us all root for him like an old friend we were cheering on from the sidelines. He was hands down the season's shining light, bringing a much needed breath of fresh air amid some pretty awful characters. Haha, <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Petroza's genuine warmth and easygoing nature made the show a true pleasure to watch, don't you agree? You're a gentleman. Thanks, Chef. It means a lot coming from you. Aww. Obviously, he survived the elimination that night. I think we all cried with him during this moment. I already feel like a winner, but I've got a long way to go. Gosh, who knew Hell's Kitchen can make you ball? He truly earned those compliments from Chef Ramsay, his dedication and skill were undeniable. In the years much after the show, learning about his passing after his battle with cancer was hard to fathom. Petroza's journey on Hell's Kitchen was a roller coaster of emotions, and his untimely departure left a deep sense of loss in me. He left behind a legacy of kindness and determination that will forever be remembered. Cheers to Petroza, a standout who touched our hearts and exemplified the best of what the show had to offer. Several viewers think that Petroza was a much more deserving winner than Christina, but that's debatable. And I totally side with this comment that mentions that Petroza was a rare breed who didn't have the heart to nominate anyone else apart from himself. Well, of course he was messy, he was at times even a bit fussy, but hey, he was the only guy who could chug down an entire bottle of beer before hitting the service. Despite all that, he was the saving grace for season 4, and yes, I count him as one of my favorite chefs on Hell's Kitchen. But what about you? Let me know in the comments section down below. While his journey on Hell's Kitchen was nothing short of remarkable, I'm sure he's cooking up a storm in Heaven's Kitchen. Now, seeing Chef Ramsay give Kaya this motivational boost, man, it really got me right in the feels. I've made thousands. Everybody made mistakes, okay? But you just need to bounce back. Here was the maestro, the god of the culinary world, revealing that he's not infallible. This revelation transformed him from a distant authority into a relatable mentor, a beacon of hope and encouragement for Kaya, and perhaps for all of us. I love this moment because it reminds us that even the grandest of achievements have their roots in imperfection. And well, it's the journey of learning and growth that truly defines us. But let's get down to what led to this heartwarming moment. Let's recap a bit, shall we? So, after the service wrapped up in the 14th episode of season 20, there was this touching moment between Chef Ramsay and Kaya. He approached Kaya and asked her about that breakdown she had after making just one little mistake. He didn't come down on her like a ton of bricks, instead, he showed her his softer side. He told her straight up, everyone, even himself, trips up now and then. It's not about the fall, it's about how you get back up. Kaya must have really been feeling the pressure like a true perfectionist. Man, I can relate. But it was truly tough seeing her beat herself up like that over one slip. Chef Ramsay sent her off to grab some water in the back storeroom, but man, things escalated quickly. When Kaya went through that moment of hyperventilation during that tough breakdown, you could practically feel the weight of her anxiety hanging in the air. Watching her struggle like that, it hit me, you know? 
It wasn't just some TV drama, it was some real life emotion playing out on screen. This is a reminder that the kitchen's pressure isn't just about the dishes, it's about the chefs too, the real people behind the aprons. <sighs> Kaya's anxiety wasn't just a random hiccup, it was a sign of how intense stress can really mess with our heads. This moment truly underlines why talking about mental health is so darn important. There it is. Let it out, bud. Really angry. And you know, it wasn't just a simple there there moment. Sous chef Christina had this incredible knack for saying just the right things at the right time. And don't you dare show this kind of weakness in front of these guys. It's a competition. I'm willing to bet the less than two minutes we saw on TV was just the tip of the iceberg. They had to trim down this heartwarming interaction to fit the show's runtime, right? This is what makes sous chef Christina the best winner of all time in my eyes. She was incredibly reliable, compassionate, and had amazing leadership skills. And if you haven't watched this video of her, I insist that you do. But there's no denying that Chef ramsey has got a soft spot, you know? He's all about contestants who keep it real, who aren't trying to put on some fake fancy act. Case in point, Julia Williams. Before diving into the Hell's Kitchen mayhem, she was working at a Waffle House. Now, some of her red team pals thought she couldn't cut it, throwing some shade because she wasn't coming from some swanky fine dining restaurant. They kept hammering on it like a broken record. But Julia, for her credit, didn't go around pretending to know everything about Wellingtons and Lobster. Sure, sure, she didn't have a ritzy background, but she owned her Waffle House background loud and proud. And guess what? That honesty, that grit, it paid off big time. She hustled, she climbed, and bam, she cracked the top four. She proved her strength, earned a black jacket, outlasting a bunch of doubters she had on her team. Despite her elimination, Chef Ramsay went above and beyond to show how much he appreciated her talents. You have an exceptional amount of talent. He also invited her to come back and compete on the show again, which is impressive, right? Because there's something quite amazing about you. Thank you. I am very proud of you. Those are some of the most important words we crave to hear, whether it's coming from our parents or mentors, right? Telling someone you're proud of them is a way of recognizing their worth as a person, affirming that they're capable of creating a positive impact and contributing to something greater. And Julia more than earned that appreciation. Seeing folks who've come from humble beginnings, being handed that golden opportunity to shine and refine their skills is a real tearjerker. I mean, imagine the feeling when someone who didn't start with much gets that chance to grow and glow. This really takes me back to this moment right here. He cared where I came from and none of that. All he cared about was my food. Seeing Millie achieve such heights in life, rising from humble beginnings, fills our hearts with genuine happiness and admiration. This is one of my favorite moments when he bared his heart, sharing how food has been his first taste of love, a connection he longed for, a connection he only found in the kitchen. I never knew what love was. Food is actually the only thing I get my 100% back. As Chef Ramsay praised Millie's passion, you can help but feel the weight of his journey. Millie's path hadn't been an easy one. He had faced homelessness. It's like food became his lifeline, his comfort, and his way of healing. Food for him was more than just sustenance, it was a language of love that he had been deprived of for so long. The struggles he'd weathered, the hunger he'd endured, they gave him a strength that shone through his every decision. People don't understand how real it is when you can't run back to your mom or you can't run back to the family house. Potential isn't confined to degrees or pedigrees. It's about the fire within, the willingness to learn, and the resilience to forge ahead. And, well, Chef Ramsay made sure that Millie never felt insecure about his lack of polished experience. You underestimate yourself. You can cook. Yes, Chef. You put up some bloody good food. As you may know, he was offered to train and improve his skills for a week in London and is now working at Gordon Ramsay's Pub and Grill in Atlantic City. Now, fathers play a vital role in providing a sense of security, both emotionally, financially, and physically. However, the absence of this nurturing bond during our formative years can leave an unfathomable void. It can leave a wound that cuts us so deep and can affect us in ways we hardly comprehend. The emotional scars of growing up without this form of support can linger, impacting our self-esteem, relationships, and overall well-being. For Millie, who had perhaps never experienced someone having his back in quite that way, Chef Ramsay's unwavering support must have been akin to finding a long-lost compass. 
And well, it was so wholesome to witness how overwhelmed with gratitude he was. Like a father figure, like to me and nothing in between. I love you and I appreciate you. Speaking of heartwarming moments, whenever I see contestants reunited with their families, I choke up a little bit. But this one was truly special. <laughs> your wife Tiffany and your son Gavin. I love you. Scott was just the sweetest, wasn't he? You could really tell how much he'd miss them. That photo of his family by his bedside wasn't just a picture, it was a piece of his heart that he kept really close by. You could just hear the ache and yearning in his voice. Having to say goodbye to my kids is probably the hardest. Plus, aren't those kids just adorable? Who could stay away from them? I don't blame Scott for tearing up. Now, it's hard to forget Joy's little meltdown over the undercooked pork during the budget challenge. It's not even done. It's not done. The meat isn't even done. And well, it's Scott who swoops in with that heartwarming hug. You can practically feel the camaraderie, the support radiating from him. It's like a reminder that in the midst of this challenge, amidst this rivalry, there's still room for compassion and kindness. I feel bad for Joy. She was definitely emotional about her pork. There's a quote that goes, leadership is all about emotional intelligence. Management is taught while leadership is experienced. And Scott proved that he could take charge of a brigade. Many people perceive compassion and kindness as weakness, but then there are people like Scott who prove them wrong. You it's, it's about looking out for your team, even if you're in the competition against them. Okay. I'm done. No, 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 come on. It's okay. Come on, let's go. Get it together. Yeah, I couldn't forget about this, could I? Could you imagine? We would have missed a whole season of Petroza because he was seriously contemplating giving up. Aren't you wondering why? because he got sent back to the dorms after he couldn't nail down the menu. All thanks to Bobby, who headed over like a true buddy to bring some comfort and a pep talk. Petroza, all of a sudden, started getting all emotional, and, well, Bobby, he handed over his apron to dab his teary eyes. That moment allowed us to see their incredible bond, a brotherhood, shine through even in the heat of the competition. It was like saying, hey, we're rivals, but we're also in this together. But here comes a moment that made every single person, despite which team they belong to, ball their eyes out. Let that be a reminder of what you've achieved in this competition. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Man, Sterling's elimination was a tough pill to swallow. Rarely do you come across a guy as friendly and warm as him. You could see it in the faces of the other contestants. They were feeling the same punch in the gut. That tells you what kind of angel Sterling was, right? Even in that moment, he carried himself with such grace and poise. It's one of those moments where I'd protect Sterling at all costs. I mean, just declare this man a national treasure already. While I was looking through Reddit, I found several users singing praises for the man. Most of them spoke about how positive and polite he was, while at the same time being funny as hell. Some of them even named him as their favorite non-winner contestant from the show. If you want to know what Mr. 100 is up to nowadays, make sure to check this out right here. And hey, I also found this article which spoke about Sterling giving his bone marrow to an 18-year-old at Georgetown University. What a hero. Well, that's my man Sterling being amazing as always. Probably the only beef he had was with Bryant, but the latter chose him on his team during the finale. Now, here's where it gets super sweet. Sterling, the kind of guy who wears his heart on his sleeve, gets totally surprised by this move. And what exactly does he do? <laughs> In a world where guys are conditioned to shy away from showing affection, we love to see such bromance, don't we? Speaking of which, we've seen all kinds of relationships brewing up on the show. But this one was truly moving. After the red team lost the scallop cleaning challenge, Lacey doubted her place in the team, but someone was there to talk her through it. I talked to Lacey because I figured it might help to talk to someone. I shouldn't be here. At this point, I don't even care. How many times have things gotten better simply because a friend decided to sit beside us and just listen? We all need someone like G in our life, don't we? I'm so grateful I have someone like that. But anyway, then this happened. <laughs> Oh, are you okay, G? She slipped on a slick patch of oil, injuring her ankle. Oh, God. Anxiety rippled through the kitchen as the medic assessed the situation. The pain was evident, casting doubt on G's ability to tackle that night's service. Despite the discomfort, she resolved to press on with the prep work, brushing aside LA's valid concerns. What a champ. 
Just before the service kicked off, she bravely shared the news of her injury with Chef Ramsay, expressing her desire to soldier on and give it her all. The famous chef, understanding her determination, gave her the green light to participate. I'd like you to stay as well. As soon as the service ended, G hobbled back down to the hall for a second visit to the medic. Wrestling with the feeling of being a burden to her team, she was met with a chorus of encouragement from her teammates. All of them insisted that she had done remarkably well and deserved to stay. Despite her desire to remain on Hell's Kitchen, G recognized the weight of her injury. She foresaw it as a potential hurdle for the women's team for the rest of the competition. So, with unshakable resolve, she volunteered to step back and set her focus firmly on the team's triumph. Even as Andrea passionately championed G's abilities, G remained unswayed, holding firm in her belief that stepping aside was the right path for the red team's victory. In Chef Ramsay's signature fashion, he acknowledged G's talent while candidly admitting that pushing on while in severe pain wouldn't be just. Yet, he acknowledged G's immense courage and determination, allowing her to retain her chef's jacket as a symbol of her unwavering pride. As Andrea wheeled G out, this is what happened. Well, okay. Okay. Oh my god, goosebumps said he won? The bravery she displayed in embracing her limitations and prioritizing the team's well-being was nothing short of awe-inspiring. It's a true testament to the incredible spirit that defined her Hell's Kitchen journey. The universe has a cruel sense of humor because Colleen and Lacey? Those two were horrible and I can't help but wonder how far G would have gone if not for that injury. I mean, her cooking was just amazing. Cooked perfectly. Thank you, chef. She totally rocked the scallop challenge and knocked it out of the park with her signature dish. She was super down to earth and humble, which just made you root for her even more. Due to the circumstances, it's not fair to continue well, going on up. under that amount of pain. Now, it's not just me. Viewers think G was an absolute powerhouse in the kitchen. Had it not been for that sprained ankle, she was definitely going to be a frontrunner for the title. Did you notice how Charlie holds the door? I know we've come to HK for the drama, but it's moments like these that make us stay. I can't wait for a new season. Speaking of which, who among these contestants I've covered so far would you like to make a comeback on the show? You can also drop all the names you can think of in the comments section down below. Well, we've seen this happen in the past, and who knows, your favorite contestant might just make it to the next season for a second run. Anyway, I think Chris's journey hit home in a really profound way. He'd been through some tough mental health struggles before, and being on the show, the stress, the intense services, everything was taking a toll on him. So, he made a tough call for himself and decided to step away, prioritizing his mental well-being. I feel like the longer I stay, the more it's going to progress in this darkness. What's really moving is how everyone handled it. Chris, first and foremost, recognizing his own needs and speaking up for himself, that takes a ton of courage. Like those feelings that like, I once felt that I've tried so hard to get away from, I feel like creeping on me again. Then you've got Christina, of course, and Chef Ramsay. They didn't brush it aside or make it seem less important. They understood, they respected his decision, and they showed some empathy. This tells us that it's okay to ask for help, to put ourselves first when we need to, and that support and empathy can make all the difference. In a world where mental health can sometimes be brushed aside, this situation stands out as a reminder that taking care of our minds is just as important as taking care of our bodies. If you're uncomfortable and you're feeling demons, then you need to go and get help. Remember that, guys, all right? Anyway, take a quick look at social media and those motivational quotes are everywhere, right? Stuff like champions never give up and quitting means you lose forever plastered on black and white backgrounds, usually with lions or some dude in suits. It's like this idea is floating around that quitting equals weakness. And yes, in some cases that's true, but other times it can be toxic not to quit. Like the hero in this entry, we've even got this hero badge for those who tough it out no matter how hard it gets. But if you pull away just a little bit, that whole win at all costs deal isn't all it's cracked up to be. Sometimes, like I mentioned, calling it quits is actually a stronger move. It's like having the guts to step back and say, hey, this just isn't right for me. And to take yourself off an opportunity thousands would kill for. But for me, it's just absolutely the right thing to do. Yeah, it's realizing that there's more to life than just grinding through pain for a goal. It takes some real bravery to walk away when you know it's the right call. And trust me, you'll know. So next time you see one of those quotes, remember, it's not just about pushing through, it's also about having the wisdom to choose your battles wisely. Oh man, the moment that really tugs the heartstrings was when the red team rallied together before the service and said, 
Let's go, guys. Come on, guys. Right, let's do this one for Chris. It's these moments of unity and support that make you realize how much of a family they become in the midst of all that competition. Well, some of them. But this next service was really special, since each and every customer was treated to the best of what Hell's Kitchen has to offer. Perfect. That's perfect. Unlike any lamb I've ever had. Yeah. Looks like these customers had one hell of a memorable night. But this isn't the first time the customers had a foodgasm so intense, you could almost feel it through the screen. Yep, just like in season 4, when a customer couldn't stop singing praises. Oh my gosh, it's so good. The competition was getting tougher by the day, and we were now down to just 4 chefs. Each of the chefs were getting ready for their next dinner service, and only had one chance to prove themselves. This service was packed with tons of drama. While the contestants were off to an amazing start, would they be able to handle the pressure? As the dinner service began, Chef Ramsay called out the first ticket. Jen, Gavin, and Corey Erling communicated very well and got the first order of appetizers ready. Both orders came out at lightning speed. But did they end up compromising the flavors of their dish by trying to finish it on time? When Chef Ramsay first tasted Corey's scallops, this is what he had to say. Nicely cooked the scallops. Thank you. Phew, that's relieving. Next, Ramsay waited on Jen's risotto, and when she sent it up to the pass, Chef Ramsay looked serious. Was Jen in some deep trouble? Just as Chef Ramsay tasted the dish, he called her out, and this is what followed. Stunning. Stunning risotto, yes? Sure, the famous chef was impressed, but what about the customers? When the dish was served, this is how the customers reacted. That was a bang-on job. Now, that's the kind of start to a service Ramsay was looking for. And 25 minutes later, the appetizers continued to fly out at a good pace. However, Jen, somewhere along the way, lost her footing. After a string of perfect orders, Jen brought up a risotto that was a bit too mushy. And Chef Ramsay couldn't believe the fact that she screwed up the momentum. So this is what he had to say. Have you switched off now? Not at all, Chef, not at all. The rice is mush. Ramsay then asked her to get her act together as he started working on fixing her dish. Thankfully, Jen's second attempt at the risotto was perfect. And while she expected Chef Ramsay to praise her, this is what happened instead. It's amazing what you can do when you put your mind to it. Yes, Chef. You just confirm how lazy you are. In the end, Ramsay was mad at her for her inconsistent performance, and this is what he had to say. You only do when it suits you. You blow hot and cold. Stunning plan. Stunning plan. The team moved on to the entrees, and Luis Petroza and Corey brought their dishes to the pass. Corey had managed to nail the salmon once again, and Chef Ramsay was impressed. Next, the famous chef waited for the salmon garnish. And when Christina McImer brought the carrot puree to the pass, she forgot to mention an important detail while handing over the pan. So, this is what happened. Don't stop and look stupid like some thick cow. This wasn't gonna end well, and just as I expected, Chef Ramsay was fuming and lashed out at Christina by saying this. If a handle is over the f***ing flame, say something, will you please, Chef? Yes, Chef. Christina acknowledged her mistake and promised to never do it again. I mean, she was single-handedly responsible for burning Chef Ramsay's hand, and that's crazy. But guess what? Something even crazier happened when she got her second garnish to the pass. Not again. I mean, how could she forget to inform him again? Was she even all there? I mean, you guys have to see how hot this pan really was. Check this out. No, no. You're not even, you're not, you're not even fucking telling me. That pan was literally sizzling hot. Which makes me wonder, was Christina doing this on purpose? Either way, the show had to go on, and Chef Ramsay ordered her to wake up and moved on to the next set of orders. As the team continued with their appetizers, Jen and Corey had to be at the top of their game to finish the appetizers on a good note. But Jen was starting to feel a little sluggish. She declared that she was concentrating on the risotto and ignored frying the quail eggs even though she was asked to do so. Now, let me remind you, Jen has never been so much of a team player. And by doing things at her own pace, Jen was just being herself. When she finally got the eggs done, they were rejected for being burnt. They were so burnt that a minor fire had erupted at the garnish station. Chef Ramsay was growing impatient. He was endlessly waiting for the orders and was desperate to have them out as soon as possible. Ramsay thought that Jen was delaying things on purpose, so he had to remind her of this. Teamwork, yes? Talk to them. It's not about you now. It was already an hour into the service, and not only Chef Ramsay, but even the customers were growing impatient. Would the food do the trick, or would the customers have to leave unhappy? When the appetizers were finally served, this is how the customers reacted. Mm. 
It looks like the customers approved of the appetizers, but now they were waiting for their entrees. Would this just be another endless wait? Or would the contestants rush to complete their orders? As the team moved on to the entrees, Corey was lagging behind with her dish. But since Chef Ramsay was in a hurry, she took a risk and sent it up to the pass. Ramsay was in such a haste that he served it immediately, but guess what happened? The dish came right back for being undercooked, and the famous chef was pissed. Everything's perfect so far. That's f raw. Ramsay couldn't believe that Corey was beginning to fail him, just like Jen did a few minutes ago. He asked her to get her act together because they did have a good start after all. Eventually, Corey's refire was accepted, and Petroza's perfectly cooked beef brought the team back on track. So, the dish was perfect, but Petroza's station was anything but that. My god. Chef Ramsay couldn't believe how anyone could be this messy, and this is what he had to say. You can't slice something stunning on top of something sh Petroza got to work immediately, and not only claimed his station, but sent out another remarkable dish to the pass. His filet mignons were so good that Chef Ramsay didn't care if he was working on a messy station anymore. An hour and a half into the service, almost all the diners had received their entrees. Ramsay motivated the final four, and they completed the service on a sweet note. But what about the customers? Well, it looks like they had a delightful night as well. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Post-dinner service, Chef Ramsay's expression was pretty grim, and the contestants were beginning to get a little worried. I don't know what to say anymore. Ramsay then raised his hand, but what he did next left all the contestants stunned. <laughs> Tonight was extraordinary! Yup, Chef Ramsay was so happy that the service ended on a great note and left several customers satisfied. However, this next service was full of mistakes. From being undercooked to incomplete, each order had some issues. But Chef Ramsay, as always, knew exactly what to do. Get out! It was the first dinner service of season 14, and 18 new contestants were geared up to face their worst nightmare yet. Knowing how most of the first dinner services aren't really successful, would this one be an exception? That night, actor Dean McDermott, German film producer Michael O'Hoven, Puerto Rican actress Joyce Garot, and American football player Delaney Walker dined in at Hell's Kitchen. As a special, a pan-seared prawn appetizer was served tableside by Josh Chavado from the blue team and T. Gregoire from the red team. As the red team got their first order, Michelle Tribble propelled her team to a strong start after getting her scallops accepted. In the blue team, Cameron Spagnolo got started with his team's first appetizer order. But when he delivered his risotto to the pass, it was rejected for not having enough butter and salt. Nick Bond quickly helped and got the risotto accepted, but the team had to wait because Michael Dussault dropped the scallops really late. And well, this left Chef Ramsay in dismay. How? The risotto's dying! In the red kitchen, Krisha Smirler was completely lost, and the team unfortunately had no time to babysit her. Sous chef Andy took notice and asked Megan Gill to help her, and thankfully the team was back on track. Their next table was McDermott's table. So Monique Booker and Christine Hazel started working on their meat dishes in order to cook them to perfection. 40 minutes into the service, Michael finally got done with the first order of scallops, but was it up to standards? After noticing that the scallops were colored on one side and boiled on the other, this is how Chef Ramsay reacted. The sad thing is he fucked two portions as well. You are not at the fucking senior home. Ramsay warned him that he had one last chance before he got kicked out of the competition. So Michael got to work on his refire immediately after and sent it out to the pass. Would the appetizer manage to please the customers? Now, this was the first batch of appetizers that was leaving the blue kitchen, and this is how the blue diners reacted. That was delicious. Yeah, I did it. It's always rewarding when the customers enjoy the food, but don't forget, this was just the beginning. Would the team continue to maintain its stride? Back in the red kitchen, the team started working on their entrees, and Christine sent out her first order of pork. Chef Ramsay noticed that Christine sliced the pork before the lamb was even ready, and because of that, the pork went dry. At this point, there was no room for any gaps in communication. Now, the red team had to suffer the consequences, and this is what Chef Ramsay asked them to do. Refire! One pork, one lamb! Urgently! An hour and a half into the service, the red team was still working on McDermott's entree. As Christine sliced the lamb once again, the lamb was way too raw. To make matters even worse, Megan found out that the oven wasn't hot enough. As she told Christine to use the convection oven, Megan discovered that Monique's oven was off the entire time. Were these contestants really ready for Hell's Kitchen? How could they make such a dumb mistake? You don't even have to be a chef to know this stuff, man. Finally, after a lot of back and forth, Christine and Monique sent out their orders, but would it be their saving grace? Sadly, this is how it turned out to be. Raw lamb, dry pork! Look at it! 
Ridiculous! Later, Christine returned to get a refire, and guess how many contestants were working on fixing the lamp? You have to see this to believe it. These two right here. Despite all that, the pork turned out to be raw. There was no way Chef Ramsay would send out raw pork to be served, but there was something he really wanted out of the kitchen. The entire team. Get out! Get out! Piss off! Meanwhile, the blue team was at the top of their game, and the customers were delighted with their entrees. Amazing. Perfect. That's perfect. But in this next service, two very famous personalities dined in, but the teams were struggling to dish out their orders. However, with one swift command from Chef Ramsay, things turned around for the better. It was the brunch service of season 15, and this service was going to be really special. It was meant for the local chefs to get a break from their work life and spend time with their families over a delicious meal. Cause, well, everyone knows it's not easy being a chef. That day, two VIPs dined in, being Florida, who was served by the red team, and Jeff Dunham, along with his puppet Walter, who was served by the blue team. As the service began, Florida graced Hell's Kitchen with his presence, and the red team was stoked to have him as their customer. However, just as the red team received their first order, they started having some problems. Like how Jackie Fuchs barely communicated with Arielle Malone on the chicken and waffles. When Jackie asked for a time, this is how she replied. Jackie, how long on chicken? Got you. Got you. Really? Got you? That means nothing. When asked for a ticket time, you better give the time or you'll frustrate absolutely everyone. But who was gonna explain that to Jackie? She believed that she had everything under control, but when she got her chicken out of the oven, it was burnt. It looks like that's a sign for Jackie to cut the crap, huh? Meanwhile, look who just walked in. Put a table in the kitchen. Yeah. You know, I think we lost up there. Jeff Dunham and Walter had just filled Hell's Kitchen with a renewed spirit, but mind you, this old man was gonna be hard to please. Would the blue team be able to live up to the challenge? The team was pretty shaky right from the start, since Jared Botkin brought the blue team's first order of chicken, which turned out to be really raw. Since this order was headed straight to Dunham's table, Chef Ramsay was infuriated. He called the entire team to the pantry and did this. I swear to God, I, I, I'd rather you just all off out of it. And while the entire team was getting schooled in the back, the drama didn't escape Walter's ears. I heard the F-bomb. Chef said the F-bomb. Meanwhile, Jackie worked on her timing, and the order finally reached Florida's table. But did the rapper enjoy his meal, or would it go down as his worst experience yet? Wow. Heaven's Kitchen. So, it looks like it was worth the wait. In the meantime, Chad Gelso sent up Nikosha's salad, but Ariel forgot about the quail eggs that went in it. When Chad brought his eggs to the pass, Chef Ramsay chewed him out. She dresses a salad, put the quail egg in the salad. Stop f***ing around. 30 minutes into the brunch service, the blue team was working on their refire. However, when Jared sent out his refired chicken, it came out raw yet again. Fed up with Jared, Ramsey did this. I can't accept this any longer. Get out! Get out! Finally, the blue team got Dunham's table accepted, and they rushed to serve the table before the old man got wild. Thankfully, the blue team escaped Walter's anger since it looked like Jeff was having quite the foodgasm. And well, that's how you relish a good dish. That is amazing. An hour and a half into the brunch service, the blue team moved on to their next ticket. With Jared gone, Danny Harrison felt a little pressured, but continued to work on the ticket. She really wanted to get the food out on time. At the same time, Frank Kella asked Manda Palomino to watch his French toast, and Manda got to it immediately. When Ramsay reminded her about the steaks, Manda rushed to her station to check them out. But where does that leave the French toast? Is that burnt? Yep. Chef Ramsay was extremely furious. Manda admitted that she was assigned with watching the toast, and Frank threw her under the bus by saying that she took over his station. But Ramsey was over and done with the confusion and did this. You are standing right in front of it. Yes, Chef. Do me a favor. Get out! In the dining room, the guests started to grow impatient with the wait. And seeing this, Chef Ramsey decided to send the red team to the blue kitchen to help Danny and Frank. With the extra hands, the blue team was finally able to send out all their orders to their guests. And as they say, all's well that ends well. Flavors are oh, It's really good. They enjoyed it. How excellent was the food? Amazing. But in this next service, the contestants actually got kicked out of the kitchen. Get out. I'm stuck. Despite that, the customers were in for a treat. How in the world did that happen? It was a new dinner service for the All Stars, and both teams were ready to beat each other and see someone leave. During that night, Tyler Hilton, Sebastian Rosh, and Kesha Sharp dined in at Hell's Kitchen. When both teams received their first order, in the red kitchen, Elise Harris and Jennifer Normant were at their best communication. From the previous season, we know that Elise is a poor team player, but this time, she was here to win it. 
Both contestants pushed their appetizers out, and this helped the red team get off to a strong start. The blue team wasn't far behind, with Millie Medley and Nick Peters Bond rocking their stations like never before. But has there ever been one service that ended just as well as it started? Things had to go down, and that's what happened when Chef Ramsay called out the first ticket for the entrees. Out of nowhere, Robin Almodovar accidentally talked over Ramsay, and this pissed him off. I took my lamb out. I put my lamb back in. Yes, chef. I don't give a f what you took out. The famous chef was already irritated, and Robin only made things worse when she sent up a Wellington that was cold. The atmosphere in the kitchen was definitely getting heated, but what's crazy is that the diners had just the opposite reaction. In the blue kitchen, Chef Ramsay asked Robin to repeat the orders he called out, but she failed to give him an answer. Although, while she did recite the order after a while, Robin sent up two Wellingtons when only one was ordered. And this made Chef Ramsay angry. The lamb's ready, I told you that, but the beast blue! Yes, yeah, Chef! The Wake up! Two hours into the service, both teams were on their final tickets, and the team to finish first would be the winning team. The red kitchen was on their final ticket when Dana sent up a Wellington that was overcooked. Dana had a backup plan, which is good, but that came out raw. Chef Ramsay was dismayed and sent the red team to the pantry for a brutal showdown. I want you to go upstairs and think how your team can be stronger without two of you in it. After a disastrous night, Chef Ramsay and sous chef Christina were the ones to wrap up the service. And needless to say, the food was mouth-watering. This is so delicious. So these were the times when customers absolutely loved the food on Hell's Kitchen. I'm waiting for the moment I can dine there someday. Do I have to audition to be a customer or something? Please help me out with this, guys.